We're here in the Charge Heads garage to get an update on the TVR wedge, the Tesla swapped TVR. Let's get into it. It's almost like the TVR's been painted on. Ralph, great to see you. Well, Good evening. We, what have you got in your hand there? Ah, well, this is one of the three isolation sensors that we're using on your TVR. Because the battery packs split into three individual packs, uh, we've got to make sure that each one of them is operating safely. So this is a, uh, a CAN bus based isolation sensor. So we've got power, ground and CAN bus coming out of it there. Mm. We've got uh, two wires that go to two separate places on the, the chassis to get our ground reference voltage and that's really important. Right. Then we've got uh, two wires off the positive and off the negative side, which we take onto two different places within the battery box, so that it will check that the positive wire and the negative wire have no connection whatsoever with the chassis. And that's so, basically the isolation, tell me if I'm wrong, is there to stop me getting electrocuted? Yeah, basically. So it's continuous monitoring. All the time that the ignition is switched on, um, this is working. If it does detect there's a fault, say a cable gets uh, smashed or something like that, you drive over some debris in the road and, a, and it, it sort of chomps through a cable, this will pick it up and the system will then go through a safe shutdown to make sure that you can pull to the side of the road and the whole vehicle is isolated. Nice. Safety first. Yeah, absolutely vital piece of kit. We don't use the word vital anymore. Essential. So you've got something that looks very familiar, the cell guard, and we had the chat from cell guard. And I'll pop the video up at the top of the screen so people can find out more about this uh, little device. But Ralph, what is it? Well, we've been trialing these for a while now and they're, they're really handy. So uh, the, the crux of it is there's a gas sensor at the top there. Right. So if anything started going wrong with the cells and they start producing any volatile gases, mm. this will pick up really early. So we get early warning of anything going wrong with the batteries, which to be honest is pretty unlikely unless you've crashed. And you'd never crash a TVR, I know. So that's, no. we don't need that bit. No. But it's there just in case, if someone borrows your TVR or something like that. The other thing this has got in it is a, a G sensor. So these will get bolted to the top of the battery box inside. Yep. And the G sensor allows us to work out whether the vehicle's been in an accident. Yeah. The, the scenario we're always thinking about is what happens if you get caught in a multiple car pileup. So no fault of your own, you're just driving down the dual carriageway, you stop in front, you know, a car stops in front of you, you stop in good time, someone behind you just smashes into the back. You're knocked unconscious, ignition's still on, emergency services come to cut you out, they don't know your vehicle's electric, how do we make it safe? So by having a G sensor in there, we can set a, a trigger limit where we know that means you've crashed, if it detects that, then we'll go through a safe vehicle shutdown procedure. Yeah. So within about 10 seconds, all of the orange cables are isolated. So anyone attending that accident is attending a isolated vehicle. Does it detect all different types of gases? Because I'm pretty sure my missus would want to strap one of those to me and have some sort of controller to electrocute me every time I pass some gas. <laughs> yeah, this one is specifically tuned to the volatile organic gases that are given off by lithium ion cells when they start overheating. So not the volatile gases. That's a different type of volatile yes. gas. Yes, very organic. Very organic, <laughs> very different. We so could got... try that, but obviously if this gets contaminated, we'd have to throw it away. It would definitely be contaminated. Mm. The other thing about these is they've also got a temperature sensor in, so it measures the temperature of the air at the top of the battery box. Yep. That's another layer of safety that we have. So we're measuring the cell temperatures. So that's all going through your Orion battery management system to keep that under control. We've got an extra set of temperature sensors that go into our vehicle control system. And this is on the top of that as well. So even if we lose control with the Orion, we know if anything is overheating and we can make sure everything's shut down properly. And what stops the cell guard you know, activating by mistake? Or is, is there anything to stop that happening? Does it have to, is it connected to the other cell guards so they get a reading all together to confirm stuff? Or? So all of these are connected on the CAN bus together to our uh, main control unit that we've developed for your, your vehicle. Yep. So that's got the CAN signal from three of these yep. and three isolation monitors. Right. Um, it's also looking at the auxiliary contacts on the contactors and a few other bits and pieces. So that's working as your main safety controller. 
And it'll look at the signals from these and say, is that plausible? Does that make sense? So it's not a case of you've just tapped it with a hammer and all of a sudden, you know, it thinks the car's crashed. Yep. It's a case of, has it had a G signal in a certain direction for a certain duration with a certain profile? Yes, we've got confidence that yeah. is a genuine signal. A complex bit of kit, essentially. So it's not just what's in there, it's how we process it in our right. um, main vehicle controller. Gotcha. Ralph, there seems to be cables upon cables. I say cables, it's wires, isn't it? Wires upon wires yep. upon wires upon wires. I'm glad, uh, <laughs> and you haven't even got an instruction booklet. No, so, but we'll write one for you. <laughs> if you can, that's a good idea. So actually. it's all in development at the moment. So yeah. we're just uh, laying wires in where we think they need to go and then we can finish making the loom, tidy it up, get it all to the right um, standard. Yeah. And at the moment we've got a system where we've got several different modules all talking to each other. So we've got a split battery management system. We're using the Orion with the remote Orion. So there's one at the back for mm -hmm. the two packs at the back there, one at the front. Yep. And that means we don't need any cell tapping wires coming out of the battery box. So there's no exposed high voltage wires coming out of the, the yeah. battery boxes. They talk to each other on their own serial communication line, which is some more wires. Then we've got your charge controller, the onboard charger and DC-DC converter as a unit. That talks on CAN bus and it's got a couple of wires that wake the system up when you put the charging plug in. Yeah. Um, then we've got the uh, vehicle controller, which does the, all the safety uh, critical stuff and um, works out whether the thing's overheating or not. It does all the contact or weld checks um, and it correlates all the data from all the different CAN bus systems from your your gas sensors and your isolation sensors together. Then we've got a second controller, which we're using for your low voltage stuff, for your lights, your fans, and all the rest of it. Yep. That's a controller with a lot of IO on it, separate to the safety critical one that we're using. Um, oh, I? Basically, this, the safety critical stuff, we're using the same software development standards we use for the commercial stuff, for right. like the bus conversions. So it's, it's a bit of an expensive process, but it means you've got a very robust piece of software that's doing all the safety monitoring. The lights and stuff, you want to do disco lights and all sorts of other nonsense. We'll put that in a separate controller, and then if we have to modify that because you want a different disco mode or something. It's, it's not nonsense, it's, it's the <laughs> theatre. We don't have to revisit the safety critical bit. So it just separates the two out. No, sure. And uh, I did notice that there's quite a lot of uh, uh, HV cabling going on here now, so it's starting to uh, take shape. Why is there cardboard in the battery box? So all the battery boxes are insulated with um, a, a rubber-based paint. But whilst we're installing modules, we want extra protection. As we're actually putting the modules in, they're big and heavy and awkward. And mm. the problem with your TVR is it's the wrong shape batteries in. So everything's really tight. And we don't want to damage that uh, rubber coating in any way. So we're just protecting it with cardboard whilst we fit the modules in. Right. And then we take the cardboard out and and then we're back to normal. Perfect. And um, you've had a slight change of plan on the battery box uh, design to, to try and get better access when putting in the modules and putting in all the other connections. Is that right? Yeah. So having assembled uh, the top box, it was really awkward. It's not impossible, but it was really awkward. So we've actually designed another um, top box, which has got the coolant coming out the back of the box down the rear bulkhead, because the way we've moved things around, we've now got a little bit more clearance there. Right. Whereas before it was coming under the top box and out the, the back there. So we've, we've rebuilt a, a second uh, top battery box with a slightly different coolant path in it. So is the old one going to be wall art now? You can have that as wall art. Wall art, brilliant. You could even turn it into a barbecue if you want, put a couple of legs on it, a few coals in there. There we go. Yeah. I, I've already got a barbecue, but it, it's, it's a thought. There we go. It could be uh, some uh, charge heads merch. That's right. I remember what I was going to ask, and I think I might have asked it in the last episode, but it's even more relevant this oh, time. that's good. I like relevant. Is uh, the fact that, is there an emergency release for the CCS? Yes, there is. So it has a mechanical release as well, so there's a little drawstring. Good. Um, I need that in my life. Yeah, that is really important. I, I wasted many hours of my life recently. One of the highest causes of charging faults is the release solenoid just getting stuck. There we go. Yeah. So, so that's an important piece of kit is that little drawstring that just pulls it out of the way. Simply pull. Mm. Super.